Let me run a scenario by you real quick. You're a welder, you put a bid in for a job, the company decided to go with the guy who could do it cheaper. He goes in, he does his thing, obviously has no idea what he's doing, he messes up a weld, charges them anyway, and now the company's mad and they're calling you to see if you can fix it. Well today we're gonna try to remove this bad welder's weld with some plasma art gouging. When we're going to take a look at this weld, we obviously have a lot of discontinuities. A lot of porosity, we have undercut, we have cold lap, we have, I mean, almost everything in the book. And this is a small part, but bear with me, it's just a demonstration. I really haven't tried using the gouge mode on this extra fire here, and I'm really curious to see how it does. Honestly, I can get at this with an angle grinder and clean it up pretty good even though we're going to gouge it anyway. Whether it be art gouging or plasma gouging, it's likely we're going to be taking a grinder to it to clean it up when we're done. The idea behind gouging, period, is to remove metal a lot quicker, a lot more effectively than, say, using a simple angle grinder. I'm really only familiar with carbon art gouging. I haven't done a whole lot of plasma gouging, so we're going to test out this extra fire and its gouge modes and see what amperage we need. Is it too much, not enough, and uh, everything in between. Now, if you want to learn more about plasma cutting in general, we've got this really cool video right here where we actually used this extra fire and did a whole lesson on plasma cutting, what it is, and the cutting power that this thing is capable of. But what we didn't get to test is its gouge mode. The machine is all set up. It's plugged into 220. It is a single phase or a three phase machine. It's not a dual voltage machine where you can work off 220 or 110. It is only on those big boy amps because this is a big boy machine. But we can set our amperages right here. I'm probably gonna start it off at the highest it'll go at 65 amps. If I had it on three phase, I'll be able to have that 85 amps. And it has that 100% duty cycle at 85 amps when it has that three phase power, which I think is crazy. You can go through your modes here, through the cutting, the piercing, and then of course our gouge mode that we're gonna be trying here. Our air's in, it's got clean air run through the back. It's nice and dry. This thing's got a built in self-draining air dryer on it as well, but we also have some more air drying in between the compressor and the plasma cutter because dry air is really the trick to this stuff. Now we all know plasma cutters are really great for plasma cutting, but we're not trying to cut through this material. We wanna be able to keep the base material as it was, as if nothing happened. So we're gonna be trying to remove that metal. Unlike this video that Bob Moffat did years and years ago, where we did an actual plasma art gouge but on the back side to get complete joint penetration in that weld groove. So check that video out right here if you haven't seen that. Our goal today is not to get all the way down to the root. It, well, it kind of is. We just want to remove all the bad weld, but without hitting the base metal. We're going to be making sure that we have the right consumables for the job. We got our gas diffuser in. We want to make sure that these all go the right direction. It shouldn't let the machine fire or anything if they're out. You probably just throw an error code. Put our contact tip in here. Then we want to put our container. I don't know, that's what I call it. Keeps everything in there. And then we have the option to use our drag tip or the regular machine tip. Now I'm going to use the regular machine tip because I don't want these little drag pieces to kind of get in my way. And I think this is going to help maintain the angle that we're going to need as we come across. The goal is to maintain about a 30 degree angle, 30, 35 degrees without angling too far into the part. If we do that, we're probably going to do a lot more gouging than we'd like. We want to start at the top of the weld, the highest point, and just kind of sweep away at that metal as we go and push our way across. Kind of like this little motion here. Always a push, never really a drag because we want to push that metal up and away using that compressed air to blow all the filthy stuff out of the way. Really being cautious as far as what we're getting into. We're looking for that little line of lack of fusion between this material and that material. Once we see that, enough gouging should be done and we could be able to start cleaning it up with a grinder to re-weld it. So let's go ahead and make sure that all this is set up. We gotta power the machine on and let's try it out. All right, let's try 65 amps on the top. Woo -hoo -hoo. That's too gougy. I really wanna see some give in that arc. I wanna see it kind of bow. That one still looked like it really wanted to keep going. That tells me I need to come way down. We're gonna come try 40 amps. Minus five, 10, 15, 20, off the top. can really start to see that bend in the arc now at 40. I really don't want to spray my camera. I'm 
I mean, even at 40, we're getting down to the problem, I think, and it's moving it fast. It's moving it really fast. See if I can get y'all a better look at what we're going so far. Let me get a little bit further. Dark is staying on so I can see, but it's not, it's not initiating arc until I'm hitting something, so that's kind of nice. So that's looking at it. That all comes off fairly easily, especially if we were to run like a wire wheel or something in there. But you could see that porosity and just how deep it went. That's the idea is trying to gouge that material away. It's okay, I think if we get into the, a little bit of the depth of the root, but I really don't want to hit this plate or this pipe too much, if any at all. Otherwise, I'm going to have more metal to put back in than I really wanted. Look at that big old hole. Golly. That dude was nasty. Let's keep going. Bump it down to, I don't know, 35. It's moving a lot more metal than I'd like. I want to stay consistent and not have that on and off. I want to try to keep it on, but I'm trying not to also hit my camera. Yeah, that's really nice. 35 amps, there's like really no cutting. It's not really trying to cut through anymore. It's pushing the metal away. It's honestly doing a really nice job. I'm not going to lie. That beats grinding. I don't care who you are. That beats grinding any day. Just a little walk the dog action. A little up and down, side to side. Just about made it all the way around, but now that I got it set a little better, I might just try to go over like all these other spots again. Now all we're gonna do is just jimmy it. We're gonna do a quick wire wheel. Get a closer look. So check it out so we can really see some of the porosity and stuff. Ideally what we would want to do, I would say like 90% of that weld metal is removed. We could take it now with a hard rock grinding disc, get all those BBs up, clean up all that arc strike and stuff. That really took off a lot of metal and it was really simple. Now she's all spit shined up. Still has a little bit of some heavy spots, but we'll try to fix that. What we're looking for, let me see that. See that little line? That's actually this pipe and this plate and where they're fused. Ideally, we'd be searching for that little line and you can still kind of see it. Barely, 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 even in line with that piece of porosity there. There's that line of fusion. We're either looking to gouge out all the bad, make sure there's no porosity, no undercut or anything, grind it all out. Or if we had to remove this, we're gonna look for that lack of fusion and then tap it off with a hammer, hopefully. That gouge, that gouge is like a son of a gun. Now let's put the sprinter in work and fix this weld. We'll throw some 6010 on it, 7018, just to try this little guy out, man. I like to think I'm pretty familiar with small inverter machines, and one big bold claim they always seem to have is being able to weld a 6010. When inverters first came out, the 6010 would just, they couldn't push it. They need, didn't have the extra voltage needed in order to maintain the arc stability. So one good telltale sign that you have a good inverter machine that's able to run 6010 is it being able to push at least a 1 8 diameter electrode and for it to be able to definitely burn the whole rod and not spitter, sputter, just stop mid weld. That's what you'll see a lot of these little inverters do. Now the Sprinter, I was super stoked to see it come out in 2023 and the fact that it's just so lightweight, it has the capabilities of 6010, 7018, all the rods that you'll typically run in between. Uh, and the fact that it's high frequency TIG and pulse for a thousand bucks. That was nuts to me. And the 6010 weld that it put down, I didn't think it was too shabby. I think we probably could have turned it up a couple more amps and maybe wet it out a little bit better, but hey, it looked pretty slick to me. Uh, Lincoln rods are always one of my favorites as well. Switching over to the 7018, give it a little bit extra beans, and this thing just did its thing, man. Just laid things down real slick, real smooth. Of course, we're welding flat on a roller, so anybody and their grandma can pretty much do that but again everything with the combination of the rods the machine the roller uh just made this thing a lot easier to do way better than that other guy yellow Now a little 
snack on my lip. Spicy snack. Now that's a nice little machine right there. That's pretty all right. I think the company man will be happy with that. I think I got all the equipment in my shop now that I, I need in case Buddy comes back. I can fix any of his mistakes that happen. He gouged off all that bad weld and you can use plasma gouging for a lot of different things. It's important as a welder to be really well-rounded in a lot of processes, including carbon arc gouging, plasma arc gouging, stick welding, 6010, 7018, TIG MIG flux. The point is you really want to make yourself a well-rounded, more valuable welder. I hope you guys enjoyed this content today. I know I enjoyed using these machines and testing them out. I was really proud of that Sprinter for its little package and all the punch that it has. I hope you guys enjoy this. We'll see you on the next weld.